Okay. Yeah. Hi, Nathan Battalion. This is day eight of our glorious juice feast. We are now making a worm farm. <laughs> oh, God, are we excited. You have no idea. <laughs> so, instead of newspaper, by the way, we have this bin. You want to take a picture of the bin, Melinda? Okay. All right, this is our bin. It's about two feet wide. It's about four feet long. And it's about a foot and a half high. And instead of, we made holes in the bottom because these worms do not like water. So, um, some people use a metal screen on the bottom, but we just took a wooden bottom and, and dug holes. And the instructions say put newspapers, but we don't like the toxic ink from the newspapers, so we're putting leaves. Worms love leaves. I don't know if you've ever seen them crawl in, in piles of leaves, but they really love it. So here it goes. We're going to put that as a bedding on the bottom. And then we're going to take some compost, which I made by mixing regular soil with the compost I got also from leaves from the city for free and city of Oneonta. Thank you, Mayor Nader and all the rest. <laughs> Political plug, right? <laughs> no, we're just being nice here. So this beautiful black stuff, and we're going to throw that in because the worms will just, they'll be in ecstasy. Okay? So here we go. And then, after all that's in, we're going to layer it, actually. So that'll help aerate it, because if you don't allow air to, and, and the, part of the reason for the drainage holes is to let the water go out and keep the bin aerated. So you want to help do those? that, it gets anaerobic, and then it starts to smell like, like a normal compost heap. But a good worm farm will not smell. Hey, Nathan, can Philip help? Huh? Can yeah. Philip help? He doesn't want to help. No, and Johanna? They were... shy. Maybe Johanna will help. Okay. okay, good. Here uh, comes Johanna. She's brave. Yeah. Thank you. Right. She's smart, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got our worm. I hope, I hope the microphone can hear all this. Okay, we'll get a little closer. Yeah, I wouldn't be a little okay. closer. All right. Um, and then we got our worms from Verma Technology Unlimited in Orange Lake, Florida. Their phone number is 352-591-1111. Okay? Wow. So I got them because it's, it's actually hard to find a good vermiculture place here. A lot of them are in Australia, New Zealand, la, 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 la. So these people are local, and they're very nice. And actually, they're friends of Ann Wigmore from way back when. Actually, the day Ann Wigmore died, the owner of this called up the hotel, and, and, and part of the whole intrigue about that, where they claimed that she was cooking something, and that's how it started fire. Of course, Ann Wigmore never cooked, so there's a lot of bull. <laughs> but, and they suspect she was murdered, but whatever. So anyway, it's very interesting story. He's an interesting person if you check out this company. Okay, so now we got a bag of worms and here it is, two pounds of red worms. Red, and and uh, they don't have night crawlers. There's, there's several kinds of worms you can put in here. Three different kinds, actually. Now, aren't these, are, these the same? Isn't this the same company that um, helped Hippocrates? Oh, wow. Yes, they also set up the worm farm in Hippocrates. Wow, you can see them crawling in here. This Let's is see. awesome. Look, see them? These are babies. Okay. And they're about a quarter of an inch uh, thick. And they'll grow much bigger. They'll grow like half an inch. So we're going to start. <laughs> I put my hands in the tent. There they go. Initiation of our worm farm. Okay. And then we're going to put food scraps in here to really feed them. All the scraps from what's left over from the juice feasting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's the whole point, you know, so that we we are ecological. Okay, and you need about two thousand for a bin this size. That's what we have. Two pounds, about two thousand worms, and they'll grow to be ten or twenty thousand because they'll multiply within a matter of a few months. 
there it is. That's excellent. Do we put more earth? Yeah, you can put a little more earth, but I'm going to get, do we have some food, a little bit, we have some food square. <laughs> I should have brought my compost. Yeah. I've got a pile up, I have up a away. Piles of really? compost. Here we go. Huge mountains, actually. It's dinner, dinner for the worms. Oh my gosh. So. They will, they will chew this stuff up. Put, oh, by the way, you can put coffee grinds, vegetables, uh, mm. eggshells, uh, but not dairy meat, no bones, nothing like that, because that's acidic, and they recognize that, and they will actually uh, die and not thrive in that kind of environment. No vinegar, uh, no salt. Exactly the things that are not good for us is not good for the worms. <laughs> so it's, a, it's pretty extraordinary. And this, this will help us now. This will become, in two, three months, they will, this will all, um, they will multiply and eat all this stuff. And then we can put it in the garden for, for a fall garden and uh, to enrich all the vegetables that we have available for juicing for next year. So great, that's it. Ethan. Yep. That's a great project. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, Johanna? It's a great idea, and, you know, we've all heard and read so much about worm farms. This is the first time I'm seeing one being made. Mm -hmm. I only know that they naturally occur in compost in my parents' backyard and my own backyard. But this is totally cool. I think I'll go for it, too, next year. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Yeah, it's very economical. Actually, I, I found this uh, at a construction site, this box, so it cost me nothing. And I, I have a piece of a cabinet that I took out of another house that I could, I could use if I needed a second box. And I got that, you know, for nothing. The worms cost about $30, $40. The compost was free. And so, you know, it's very affordable. Don't buy one of these plastic things. The worms recognize that that's toxic just like we do, you know. And they don't do well in those toxic bins. You know, make your own. You don't actually need a bottom. You can just get a piece of screening and um, the four sides to, to keep them in. You don't need to make a, um, as one person explained it to me, you don't need to make a prison for these worms. You know, a box that's entirely enclosed in plastic. So that they're living beings and they want to breathe and they want to, uh, to they, they don't like the sunlight, but they, they, like, they love the soil. So are you going to put a top on it? No, you don't need a top. You don't need a top. Mm -mm. Okay. We do want to keep too much. I have them under here because we don't want, under a little roofing, we don't want too much water in there because they don't like water. Mm -hmm. So I might, I might put a covering, but it won't be airtight. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's well, the story. Okay. Good luck, Nathan. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Can you see me now? Because I'm going to say signing off. Signing off. <laughs> from rawwisdom.com. Oh. Take care. So now you say it in case you think you uh, Me too. Signing off from rawwisdom.com. And from all our worm friends here. They all say hi. Bye. <laughs>